I'm pleased and honored to be here today with a really good friend and actually a bit of a wizard. Um, and you'll see what I mean a little bit later, Sam Richter. Um, we hope that you and your families and colleagues are all staying healthy, both mentally and physically. Like me, you're probably realizing as the weeks now turn to months, it's time to get on to life in this new normal, to figure out how to thrive in our lives and in our businesses, despite the uncertainty ahead of us. And with that in mind, uh, we have organized this webinar as a, a way of being to service, of service to the sales community, to the business community, to help you be relevant as you're engaging with your customers and prospects right now. If you listened in on our last webinar with Phil Sterling, you will recall that he said that now is not the time to sell. It's the time to help your customers. And that's what they will remember. Uh, companies and individuals do need help. They need solutions, they need inputs, and they need ideas to improve the way they're going to do business and the way they're going to serve their customers as needs change. The question is, how do you find those companies that need the help and the individuals within them to connect with? And how do you find out what matters to them now? Now we're gonna get some answers to these big, big questions today. Uh, and I want to tell you a little bit about our guest today. So Sam Richter is an internationally recognized expert on digital information and is considered, uh, and I'm not exaggerating, this is considered the father of modern day sales intelligence. Uh, he is the founder and CEO of SBR Worldwide, No More, that's K-N-O-W More. The National Speakers Association honored Sam as one of the top 10% of, of, of the world's professional speakers, and he was named one of the top 50 sales keynote speakers in the world. Uh, Sam is the author of a best-selling book. Uh, in fact, I have read the book, Take the Cold Out of Cold Calling, uh, considered the preeminent publication on finding information online uh, and using it for sales success. Uh, Sam has created numerous technologies, including the world's top prospecting sales, meeting preparation resources, uh, the business sales Intel engine. He is a partner of Contata Solutions, a big data machine learning firm that produces sales, marketing, and business intelligence software. For more than six years, Sam was the president of the James J. Hill Center, a not-for-profit business library creating cutting-edge online resources for business. So he knows. He knows what he's doing here. Sam also spent more than 18 years in advertising, public relations, and e-commerce e-marketing, where he led strategic marketing programs for companies like Microsoft, Coca-Cola, Major League Baseball, and National Geographic. Uh, Sam studied, uh, got his BA in journalism and mass communication at the University of Minnesota School, uh, School of Journalism and Mass Communication. Uh, he lives in Minnetonka, Minnesota with his wife and two kids, and he is volunteering his time working with nonprofit organizations, including the Mental Health Navigators, where he built the nationally renowned Mental Health Resource Search Engine. Talk, talk about taking your talents and gifts and, and giving them purpose. Now, I personally first met Sam after I heard him speak at a client conference about 10 years ago. Sam, I don't know if you, you remember that. It was about 10 years oh, yeah. ago. Yeah. He blew me away. And I learned so much in that one hour keynote. I later ended up bringing Sam into work with uh, my own clients. Uh, and his impact was incredible. When I left to work for a nonprofit, he and I lost touch. But I continued to use what I learned from him. Sam, I am thrilled to be reconnected with you today, my friend, and uh, grateful that you've taken the time. It's really great to see you. Yeah, uh, it's you actually the first time I'm seeing you in a very, very long time. Um, before we get started, Sam, I wanted to ask you, you've been, obviously you're not traveling the world speaking now, but mm -hmm. you were until probably February. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, but I'm, I'm pretty confident you're still engaging and talking to some of your, your, your clients here. What have you been uh, observing or hearing as you've been engaging with business and sales leaders? What are, what, are, what are people talking to you about? What are they thinking about these days? Well, I think a lot of things, Shaquille. And first off, thank you very uh, much for the kind introduction. 
uh, I, I should hire you to just bring me everywhere because that was really good. Um, you know, I think, I think for the first month, and not gonna, nobody's going to be surprised with this, I think people were in shock. You know, we, all of us have gone through transitions before uh, in our businesses, but usually we have time to prepare for them. You know, now, of course, 9-11 and, and those kinds of things, those kind of hit out of the blue, but, but and I don't mean to diminish that, obviously, uh, but for the most of us, you know, me in Minnesota, you, Shaquille, in Canada, we weren't directly impacted by things like 9-11 other than, you know, we had to start taking our shoes off before we got on a plane. Obviously, this is impacting everybody, and it hit so fast that I think a lot of people were in shock. And those especially related, uh, in, uh, that do things related to business development, um, is, um, is, you know, as Phil talked about last week, what do you do? How do you sell? What, we, none of us have ever been here before. There's no, there's no manual that we can pick up. I mean, as far as I know, there's no book that was written during the Spanish flu saying, you know, how to do business development during the Spanish flu. So we're all kind of making it up as we go along. And, and I really, uh, I, I say I would echo what, what Phil said last week. And, but, I, but I would expand to what Phil said last week. And you know, Phil mentioned that nobody really wants to be sold to today. Uh, well, I would argue that nobody wants to be sold to ever. But there are opportunities to create buyers uh, by telling stories, by being relevant. And now, now sometimes um, it's not appropriate to even bring up the solutions that you have. And it's just the best thing to do is reach out and build relationships. But, but uh, there are opportunities out there. And I, you know, I think some of the, from a, from a more macro sp perspective, Shaquille, I think some of the areas that uh, companies are really dealing with right now is obviously a remote workforce, security related to a remote workforce, I think is going to be a big deal coming up very shortly. Uh, complete industries have been decimated. You know, I've got a client in the restaurant industry that sells technology in the restaurant industry. They're having a fun month. Um, but I have other clients who have completely pivoted their businesses. You know, they're in the packaging business and they, they used to sell, uh, you know, plastic that goes around tennis balls. They were able to quickly transition and sell sterile plastic to put uh, masks in, surgical masks in. And they're having record years or record months, excuse me. But um, you know, I think a lot of people are concerned about supply chains. How's that going to work? Uh, and people. Um, and, and I think, uh, you know, we've been in this now for a couple of months. I, I, I think we're starting to see people say, okay, this is the new normal. What am I going to do about it? I, I think I agree with you. I, I think that's the kind of thing I'm hearing now. And it really is about let's, let's, let's get on with it. Let's readjust mm -hmm. and human beings are resilient. And that's, that's basically what we do. Uh, so Sam, you know, I've, uh, had you in with my uh, with clients in the past and one thing I know is true is once you start sharing some of your practical tips you know everybody's eyes open up really wide and they're sure. so focused uh, in fact when I posted this event online um, I had a number of past clients in that class years ago that signed up and got their their team signed up oh, so great. you have a, a lot of friends online today I think um, we're all working from home, so we have to find ways to be creative with the materials and tools we have available. Uh, I'm going to ask you, Sam, if it's possible to perhaps even take the control, show your desktop, sure. and yeah, see if you can bet. share some things. But before we do that, um, I want you guys, if you, if you have them available, if you have these bungee cords around, I would see if you could find a couple because I'm going to strap myself in. You'll see from the energy that, that Sam exudes and what he shows you, we're going to move fast. It's going to be really exciting. Um, so hold on, hold on to your chairs. Sam, take it away. Show us some things that will really help sure. you. Right now. I think you've got to, uh, looks like I'm, I'm not able to, oh, there we go. Now I can share my screen. So let me pull up um, Google. So are you able to see my screen, Shaquille? Yes, I am. Okay, awesome. So one of the things we talk about in real-time relevance, and what do we mean by real-time relevance? Let me back up a little bit and, and, and talk theory for just a second. I'm going to go back to my to my main screen, and I'll, I'll go back and forth, Shaquille, so we're not always staring at a screen. But, sure. but um, when we think of real time relevance, why is that so important in today's world? Because as we were talking about earlier, as a salesperson, as a business leader, as someone in business development, nonprofit fundraising, whatever it might be, your world has dramatically changed. And we and when we think about things from our clients' perspectives, from our prospects' perspective, their world has massively changed as well. And what used to work, it's not going to work anymore. I mean, you, you might have been able to, in the past, uh, 
get a list, you know, go buy a list. Or as us old folks, we used to get the phone book, right? Uh, what, you, you know, when you you'd call at A, you'd start at A, you'd end at Z. And mathematically, you hope somebody would buy. The pure cold call salesperson. And you know what? It worked. If you mathematically called enough people, somebody would end up buying from you. Now, in today's world, we need to really shift our thinking to what's going on in the world of our buyer. And I know Phil talks about this. And if we think about our buyers, our prospects, three months ago, our solution, maybe our solution created efficiency, maybe our solution uh, helped a, a company, helped our prospects increase their revenue. And in, three months ago, those were must-haves in the minds of most of our prospects. Today, those might not even crack the top 10 of what our prospects care about. What our prospects are thinking about is we discuss, how do I manage a workforce? How do I survive? I, I've got four kids that I'm homeschooling. Creating efficiencies in my business, not even my top 10 today. And so I think the way that people have sold in the past, it has worked for many organizations, regardless of what industry you're in, getting a list, starting at A, ending at Z, I don't think that's gonna work anymore. I don't think that's gonna work with Zoom calls. I don't think that's gonna work when people reach out to you via email, via LinkedIn, whatever service they're using to connect with you. No, none of us wanna hear from an irrelevant, an irrelevant salesperson today with an irrelevant message. That's the quickest way to get into the delete folder, into the hang up folder, in the go away folder. Also think about the way that we used to prospect. For a lot of the organizations I work with, and it's estimated that for co conferences and events, depending on the industry, the reason 70% of those conferences and events even exist is for companies to go out and build relationships, meet with prospects, collect business cards, go to trade shows. And that's how people did business development depending on what the industry you're in, you'd, you'd fly and you do one presentation to many or one-on-one -on -one. And, and those days are gone. And so the only thing that I think works today is the concept of real-time relevance. And it's really the, if you think about third box thinking, right? And the, the, the core components of, of, of third box thinking is them must fit proof. Well, this is the them. Real-time relevance is the them. And I don't think you can succeed without the them in today's world. You might've been able to a few months back, but today we must be highly relevant. So that's great in theory. What the heck does that mean? How do you become relevant to what the other person cares about? And the nice thing is, is we all have this little tool called Google, or we all have this little tool called the internet. And online, we have access to more information at any time in history. I can't remember the exact statistic, but it's something like more information is created like on a monthly basis than in the previous pre-internet world, the previous collection of information in human history. And most of us don't use it correctly because most of us don't know how. And so let me share, you, uh, share with you a few techniques to, to find information on Google. I'm gonna put on my dorky glasses because I can't see anything anymore, so I apologize about that. So stare at the screen, not my ugly face. People say I've got a good face for radio. So one of the things that I'm a big fan of is the concept of sales triggers. What's a sales trigger? A sales trigger is what's going on in the minds of our prospects. What's going on in their world today? So for example, if, uh, give me, I'll give you an example of a sales trigger. If I, if I call you right now, huh? you know, hi Shaquille, this is Sam from Sam's Roofing Company. I'd love to come out and give you a free estimate for a new roof. What are you going to do? You're going to hang up. You're going to go away. That's starting at A, ending up at Z. You know, I'm at B right now. You're going to hang up. You're going to go away. But if a hailstorm just hit your house, and now all of a sudden you start seeing water leaking through your kitchen, the roof in your kitchen. Five minutes later, I call. Hey, this is Sam from Sam's Roofing Company. I'd love to come out and give you a free estimate. Well, what am I now? Well, I'm your new best friend, right? So that's the concept of a sales trigger. What's going on in your prospect's world where they might actually want you want to hear from you today the good news is is there's lots of sales triggers out there and you can find them if you know how let me give you a few examples and i'll kind of teach you some google search tricks along the way so a sales trigger in business is really a disruption something's happening in their world but one of the big disruptions a big sales trigger is a new executive being hired we statistically we know that when a new executive especially a c-level executive is being hired that person 
will spend about, it's, it's estimated about 70% of their entire annual budget within the first three months. And you might say to yourself, well, that's crazy. Nobody would do, think about it. Why was an executive hired? Well, unless it was a planned transition, that person was usually brought in because some, something happened. Uh, they were expanding. They're growing beyond the previous executive's abilities. Uh, maybe they weren't hitting their numbers. Maybe they weren't doing what, what they were supposed to do. And so they brought in somebody. And when that new executive comes in, they're really open to a call because they don't have any legacy suppliers, any legacy vendors. And this is true if you're in manufacturing, if you're, in, uh, if you're a financial advisor, sell insurance, it doesn't matter, right? Anytime that there's a transition, people are open to change. Well, here's the beautiful thing. Think about this. And here's the key to searching in sales intelligence. Think logically. If, if you were a marketing manager, at a company and you just hired a new chief executive officer, well, what do you do? You put out a press release, right? What words would go in that press release? So I'm gonna type in chief executive officer and forgive my, my spelling, I'm gonna make a lot of mistakes. Now notice that I'm putting the phrase chief executive officer within quotation marks. When you put something within quotation marks, you're telling the search engine the words within quotes must be treated as a single entity. So that phrase must come together. Otherwise, chief could be in the first paragraph, executive could be in the 40th paragraph, officer could be in the 90th paragraph. But by putting it in quotes, we're telling the search engine the words within quotes must be in that exact order. Now, if you were writing a press release, what other words might you put in that press release or that blog post or that industry article? It might be words like welcomes uh, or uh, proud to announce or, uh, you know, announces or announce. Now notice I'm using, and see, forgive me, I'm spelling there. Notice that I'm using, um, we go, oh, got some games. Let me redo that again. But notice that I'm using my uh, parentheses and you don't really need to, but oftentimes when I'm using R, excuse me, or, so welcomes or announce or announces, when I'm using or, I put things in parentheses because it helps separate those things. Now I'm gonna run my search and notice that I get a bunch of results. Now I wanna even filter this down to a specific city. So I might say Toronto. So find me new chief executives where a press release has been put out in Toronto. And, and look at these, these are some pretty good ones. But notice that some of these, as we scroll down, now these are all fairly current, but some of these start to get a little bit older, especially if we go down here. And you know we're at 1.6 million search results. And by the way, I'm not gonna be calling the CEO of Cyberpunk, if that's how you pronounce it, and say, hey, congratulations, I saw that you got promoted or you got hired a year and a half ago, right? That's not really a sales trigger. So here's something that's pretty cool. Go back to my main page of search results here. There's a button on every single Google search result. It's right over here, it's called the tools button. When you click on the tools button, a drop down menu appears where I can click on the anytime and you know, show me, I only wanna see CEOs who've been recently hired in Toronto in the past month. And these are sales triggers. So depending on what I sell, I can call any one of these individuals and I'm probably gonna have an open audience so long as the first words out of my mouth are relevant to what they care about. You know, hey, congratulations on your new job. I know that in your industry, uh, these are some of the challenges new executives face. I was wondering if I could get 60 seconds of your time to explain what I do. Align what you have to say with what you know the other person might care about. What are some other sales triggers? Could be things like um, moving or expanding, you know, or uh, moving or relocation. So, got to put it in parens, not quotes. Now, when I put or in all uppercase, I'm telling the search engine that I want one or both of those terms. Give me moving or give me relocation or move or relocating. And I'm going to leave Toronto in there. So I'm going to take out the word welcomes. That's probably not going to be in a press release, but announce or announces. And we get some, what are things, some things called like false positives. And so I'm gonna teach you another little trick here. I don't, it's really sad. 
but I don't want to see that. It's not a really a sales trigger. I'm going to do minus COVID. So I don't want anything related to the word COVID showing up. When you attach a minus sign to the word, Google or any search engine will remove all of the results with that word in it. We can go back here and change it to past year, and we can see some of those sales triggers. Uh, what are some other sales triggers? Oh, it could be merger or acquisition. Announcer or announces Toronto. And so all of these might be good reasons to reach out and call somebody. So think of what are the sales triggers in your industry? What's going on in your industry? And the, not, not so much your industry, but the industries that you call on where someone might actually be interested in taking your call. So that's kind of the, the, the first area of, of real-time relevance. So any thoughts on that, Shaquille? Is well, there any, I, any searches you'd curious. like me to try? I would, I would be really curious. I, I put a question just out there right now on yeah. the chat to see if anybody in the, in the group out there wants to suggest a sales trigger, see how, how this works. Um, let's give it three seconds to see if anybody wants to put forward a sales trigger in the chat box there. And if not, I will suggest one myself. Sure. Um, a new product introduction. Sure, perfect. So that one's gonna be a little bit tougher. Uh, because, you know, uh, there, there's going to be a lot of different terms that people use, and that's why the minus sign is going to be so powerful. But let me, uh, let me show you a couple other tips. So, so I want to say new product. Um, so this time I'm going to type in the word product, and let's just, let's say it's going to be a medical device industry. So the phrase, the word product must be in every result. The phrase medical device must be in every result because I'm putting that in quotes. But now I'm going to do something interesting because I want to eliminate as best as I can what's called a false positive. So instead of, if I just type in the word introduction into the, into the search engine, what I'm telling Google is, is anywhere in the result, anywhere in the entire article or web page that I'm searching, the word introduction must appear. But I'm gonna hopefully limit my searches by doing what's called an in-title search. So what I'm saying is the word introduction or in-title introduces, one of those two words must be in the title of the article or the document, mm. whatever we're doing. So the word product, the word phrase medical device, introduction or introduces, let's see what shows up. So we're getting some false positives here. That's because I'm probably limited to past year. So I'm gonna go back to any time just so we can see our results. Yep. So you can go through and you can kind of see. So every result has the word introduction in it. Now where this might be even better is if I go in and, um, so maybe I'll change this to new product. So I might do something like the phrase new product or product launch. So the phrase new product or the phrase product launch must be in the result, the phrase medical device, and then the word introduction or introduces, is that what I had in there? Yeah, introduces must be in the title of the document. Right. And now we start to get some good ones. So that would be, you know, again, it's kind of a trial and error, but the key here is to think like the author. Now, another neat tip you can do, uh, you can also, now I'm gonna take out in title, because I'm gonna actually limit my search results to a specific type of result. Many of our viewers today, I'm sure are familiar with this. So I'm gonna run the search, but I'm gonna click on news. So limit my search to just news articles, where the phrase new product or product launch exists, the phrase medical device and the word introduction or introduces. And so now we start to get news results. And again, same thing as before, I can go in here and I can sort my news by blogs or all news, or you know, only show me news from the past month. So that would be a way to do that. That's a good, I, I, there's somebody that, that uh, brought one up that is very relevant right okay. now. Okay, um, great. And it is um, cybersecurity breach. Sure. Or some kind of, uh, yeah, some kind of security breach. Well, for that, I'm gonna to go to a different website, Shaquille. There's a website, okay. so I'm a, I just showed you a little bit on Google News, and Google News yeah. is awesome. But um, let me just give you an example. If I go into Google News and I search for Sam 
So if I do Sam Richter speaker, because there's yeah. lots of other Sam Richters in the world, so let's just limit it to speaker. Well, there's my regular news, or excuse me, my regular search results. But if I click on the news tab, only two show up. And that's frustrating to me because I know that there's a bunch of other articles about me out there. And so uh, what, what Google News is really doing is Google News is looking at the larger publications and it also uh, doesn't keep the archives very long. But many of us call on smaller type companies, uh, you know, thermoplastics injection molding companies that are 50 million in revenue. Well, those, those folks aren't being written about in the Wall Street Journal or the USA Today. Um, so I actually created my own news search engine. It's completely free. Now you have to type in the web address because I don't tell Google that I exist, but it's called yougotthenews.com. So you need to go up into Google and type in www.yougotthenews.com. But here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna limit my search to the past year, and I can type in a company, a person's name, word or location. Now, one of the key things in my search engines is you don't have to use any of the quotation marks or minus signs or those kinds of things. That, 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 those techniques are what are called Boolean logic. Yeah. And so I've removed Boolean logic in my search engines. You just type it in. So I can go in here and I can type in cybersecurity. And I might type in the word breach. And I'm going to click on news articles. Now this is going to pull up Google News. So here's some cybersecurity breaches. Or I can go in here and I can click on more news, which is going to expand it much, much more. I'll just show you kind of the quick example. If we go back and uh, see what I'm doing here. I'm going to go back and I'm going to just type in my name just so you can see what I was talking about earlier. So where Google News had two articles, I can click on the more news button and we get the 428 articles that I know I've appeared in. And you can go in and look at uh, press releases, you know, blog posts, social media posts, those sorts of things. So for example, let's again use cybersecurity. So let's say we're looking at um, manufacturing. I want to know if there have been any cybersecurity breaches in manufacturing. So this one, I just might type in security breach manufacturing past week, click on the more news button. Now this is to make sure they don't want to make sure I'm some Russian spy or something like that. So we'll click on there. But here are some articles, news articles related to data breaches in manufacturing. So that would be you know, a way to- You know, uh, Sam, what, the, what, they, what this reminds me of is, you know, one of the things that we talk about a lot in our courses and engagements when we are working with customers to build their engagement plan with a particular company is, you know, sometimes the time is not right to go and make a, 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 a call for, you know, selling something. Mm -hmm. um, as you said, people don't want to be sold to, uh, but it's always, is the right time to a customer or prospect and offer them an insight. Uh, Absolutely. And so what, what the techniques you just showed us are a great way to do a search on an insight in an industry to get a piece of content to call up a customer, to send them an email and say, hey, I was just reading an article about this. Yep, I agree. And, and you know, one of the things, Shaquille, I actually call that the value added follow up. So what's yeah. the value added follow up? Again, especially in today's world, when you call on somebody, it's not like somebody's going to, you're not going to close the deal on the first phone call. So if I were, if I were uh, selling to you, Shaquille, you, you know, uh, Shaquille, you might say, oh, Sam, this is great, but uh, you know, we're just, we're kind of tight on our budget right now, but stay in touch. Now as a good salesperson, I'm going to say to you, well, Shaquille, that sounds wonderful. How often should I stay in touch? And you're going to say, well, why don't you give me a call in, um, in three months? Okay. So three months rolls along. And what do I typically do? I fire up my CRM system, my calendar, your name pops up. I pick up the phone and call, Hey, Shaquille, you're ready to buy yet. Yeah. I don't use those words, but that's what happens. Right. Yeah. yeah. I don't like that. When you tell me, Sam, follow up in three months, I'm not going to, I'm no, I'm going to follow up on my schedule. I want to follow up in ways that provide value. And that's the key. Again, going back to the real time relevance, it's all yeah. about them. How do we find something of value? Yeah. Now, there's lots of different ways to do that. We can, we can go in, type in a company name into something like you got the news. So for example, uh, I'll go back and share my screen here. So one way to, to provide real-time relevance, and, uh, you guys see my screen okay? Yep. 
You're seeing Google? Good. Okay. So I can go in and again, I'll go to you got the news and I just might say past week and I'm calling on General Mills, my, con my contacts at General Mills, you know, find me something that's going on in their world so that I could reach out and, and talk to them about. You know, so for example, one day ago, so Baby Yoda cereal is coming. A little bit goofy, but Shaquille, if you worked at, at General Mills, I might fire off an email just saying, hey, Shaquille, thinking of you, I'm a huge Star Wars fan, can't wait to eat the green marshmallow cereal. A little bit goofy, but you, you get the point. Now, here's something that's really cool. Let's go back to Google. So let's go back to our cybersecurity example. So Shaquille, let's say you're in the cybersecurity industry. You're interested, you know, you're interested in me, but you don't have the budget to stay in touch in three months. I don't want to stay in touch in three months. What can I do? I'm going to go in here. I'm going to type in cybersecurity. Or, so I'm going to put that in parens because it, there's two different spellings. Cybersecurity. And I'm going to type in um, trends or uh, maybe survey results. Now, I'm going to add something a little bit special to the front end here. If I type this in, if I run this search, I'm going to get a bunch of good results. But, uh, you know, I'll probably get a bunch of companies that want to sell me cybersecurity services. I'm not interested in that. I want to find a relevant article. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go here and I'm going to add the file type colon PDF. When you add file type colon, what you're telling Google is you're only allowed to search for PDF documents. And I could change that to any kind of file type. Excel spreadsheets would be XLS or XLSX. And I'll show you a couple of those in a minute. Word docs would be DOC, DOCX. PowerPoint would be PPT or PPTX. In this example, I'm telling Google, you need to find me the, the phrase cybersecurity, one or either one of the spellings, the word trends or the phrase survey results, but you're not allowed to search the entire internet. You're only allowed to limit your search to file type colon PDF. Let's run the search, see what shows up. Now look at this. Now, Shaquille, what I'm going to do is I'm going to print out one of these, or I might just grab, I'm going to read it, make sure it's good, and then I'll grab the link. Now I'm going to send you an email saying, hey, Shaquille, hope all is well. Stumbled across this Booz Allen Hamilton report online on 2020 cybersecurity threat trends outlook and immediately thought of you. Now the key to the value added follow-up, it has to be all about the other person. It can't be anything related to you. Because if it's about you, well, then that's selling. But I want to, and, and, and here's a really important word, I want to show you that I'm genuinely and authentically interested in you. Real-time relevance. It's yeah. to them. I want to show that I genuinely care. And as Phil talked about last week, well, that's probably one of the most important things you can do. So limit your search to PDF files, and we're more likely to find, uh, PD, we're for, more likely to find documents that are um, instead of web pages. And just for the heck of it, I'll show you other types of things we can find with uh, document searching just because we're here because people love this. Well, you, you, uh, yeah. well, since if you're doing that, uh, just to, to switch to another topic, I had a really interesting question I think is so relevant to people right now is mm -hmm. if somebody is looking to find a company that's pivoted, created a new product, shifted because of COVID-19, can you think of a way to search for that it's a tricky one it's a tricky yeah it one. is I, I think it's going to be very similar to what we did earlier on new okay. product but but again just the, the key on all these kinds of things is to think like the author yeah so um what i might do what i might do i think we're going to have better luck on that if we limit our search yeah. to a specific company okay. so let me give you an example of that let's say i want to know um, again what did general mills do so in this, because I'm going to look for an article, I'm actually going to, you know, if it's a decent article, the phrase General Mills is going to be in the title of that document. And then I want to have the word pivot uh, or, I guess, change or business model. Put those in parens. And um, yeah, let's just run and see COVID, what happens. COVID-19 maybe? Come yeah, on. probably put in COVID. That would be a good one. COVID or virus. And let's see if anything shows up. 
so the the so here we go how general mills is responding to covid-19 you know so those kinds of things and you can you know just try different company names try 3m yeah there yeah yeah look right. at that one general mills food service offers a new product or do service mm -hmm. yeah so those are the, the the ways i might do it and and again i might even um might even looking for my news button. Sometimes they bury the news under more. So there's some other ways to do that. Ah, yeah. I'm gonna actually maybe well, limit uh, my search by just saying the word pivot has to be in there. Yeah, look or at that. if I wanted to look at an entire industry, I might say um, aerospace. So the word aerospace must be in the title the word pivot must be in the document. I don't need the parens around a single word, COVID or virus. So those would be ways I think I would do it. I would, again, we're gonna look for those, what are those key words that I might put in here and then try different searches. So now I'm on news, maybe I'll go back to all search results. So I'm going to go back to um, the file type one because people always love that. Other kinds of things you can do with file types. Let's stick with the aerospace industry. I might say, um, so let's say I want to find, well, who are the right people to call in the aerospace industry? And one of the things I like to teach is uh, how to find member directories or membership directories for industry associations. I mean, why does an industry association uh, exist? Well, an industry association exists to provide a place for executives in that industry to come together and meet and greet and, and get some education. And if I'm looking for key prospects in the aerospace industry, well, who joins the aerospace association? Is it the, in, is it the assistant intern? Probably not. It's going to be the CEO, the CTO, the president, the vice president. Now, a lot of times these membership directories exist online. Now, we're not gonna hack into anything, but I wanna see if I can use some of the techniques I've shared with you to find some of these membership directories. So aerospace plus member, and I wanna put it, put that in quotes, directory or membership directory. Now, a lot of times these directories are PDF files. And here we go. So I could probably click on any one of these and get some pretty good leads. Yeah, yeah. Now maybe I want to see, now here's a, here's a cool one, Shaquille. I'm going to limit it to Excel spreadsheets, but inside the spreadsheet, I want an email address. Now, um, Google doesn't really allow you to search for email addresses anymore, except for one email address they're happy to have you look for, and that would be gmail.com, yeah. which is okay, because if the list is any good, somebody, somebody has got the, the, a gmail address inside that list. And this doesn't look like they have any, uh, many good ones. So I'm just gonna broaden it out here. I'm gonna say um, member, actually I'm gonna say, now I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you another one. So in URL, what's a URL? This right here is a URL, okay? This, this is the web address, stands for Universal Resource Locator. So I'm gonna say in the URL is the word attendee or in the URL is the word list. So I'm looking for a spreadsheet. The word aerospace has to be inside the spreadsheet and there needs to be a Gmail address inside the spreadsheet. The web address where that spreadsheet exists must have the word attendee in it or must have the word list in it. Separate those out so it's easier to see. Oh, I love when I get these. Fire hydrants, I don't see any fire hydrants so we'll skip it. Traffic lights. What's going on here by the way is that they don't think I'm a bad guy, they think that I'm a robot and I'm, I'm scraping. And so as you can see, here's five spreadsheets where the word aerospace is in there, Gmail address is in there, so I could download any of these and, and maybe there's some decent information. Yeah, wow. So you could then download that, identify some companies, yep. and then you can search on those companies to see what's going on in those industries. Exactly. Products, exactly. that kind of thing. You know, um, as, you, as you are doing this, I'm, I'm thinking that it, it's really uh, changed the game for uh, people in sales. I, I remember back in the day when we first met that really LinkedIn was just the thing, yeah. right? And people were just learning how to leverage LinkedIn. 
And I feel like LinkedIn's become the standard now. There's nobody that will ever go into a meeting or a call, a call now or a web call without looking at LinkedIn profile. Sure. Um, is LinkedIn still a, a valuable tool resource? Oh, absolutely. And unfortunately, yeah. I think a lot of people use it incorrectly. Okay. Now we're gonna take a risk here because LinkedIn's been having problems all day. So we'll see if it works. But I'm gonna log into LinkedIn. And just a couple of things on LinkedIn. Um, the same types of techniques I was showing you earlier are the same. I'm actually in my wife's LinkedIn profile. Um, the same techniques I showed you earlier, uh, that, that bully in those quotation marks, we're going to want to use those in LinkedIn as well. And here's why. So LinkedIn, there's 700 million people in LinkedIn, approximately. So if I'm looking for, say, Karen Anderson, if I just type in Karen Anderson, I get 8,147 Karen Andersons. And, and a bunch of them are Karen Anderson, but if I were to scroll through enough, same thing's occurring in LinkedIn. I'm saying that, because well, eventually I'll start to get Karen Smith and Phil Anderson. So again, same thing. I just want to search, put that person's name within quotation marks. And now we go down to 2,543. Every single one is going to be Karen Anderson. And if I want to limit it even further, I might say, you know, Karen Anderson, Minneapolis. And here are the 75, or excuse me, 78 Karen Andersons who live in Minneapolis. So that's just one real quick time-saving tip yeah, for you. Yeah, yeah. Now, uh, yeah. go ahead. You know, I, I, we could probably spend a whole uh, whole day on, on LinkedIn, I'm sure. And I already got a couple of notes from people that actually work for LinkedIn or Microsoft on the chat, which is fun. Um, uh, recognizing the time, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's a quarter two. So one of the observations I have as you walk through some of this, I, I, I'm pretty sure that there's probably people on the call or people that will be watching the video that might be feeling a little overwhelmed because you were doing a lot of like interesting search techniques that, mm -hmm. you know, some of us might've learned in university as we were searching for things in libraries, but you know, it's been a while. So it, it, it's, it's challenging. I, I'm, I know um, Phil was telling me that you've uh, been developing a tool like me, Maybe you got the news to, to do all the things that you were doing with those Boolean logic sure. and those, those, those long strings to make it easier for salespeople. Is that, is that something you could Yeah, for sure. I'd be happy to. And you know, earlier, Shaquille, in my introduction, you showed, uh, you held up my book, Take the Cold Out of Cold Calling. Yeah, I almost yeah, yeah. cringed a little bit because don't <laughs> go out and buy my book. It's old. You know, I've sold, I, I have 12 editions of it, but I haven't updated it in about three years because I've spending, spent the last three years really taking the ideas in the book and figuring out, <laughs> could I automate it? Because yeah, I've got a, I've got a 312 page book that can teach you how to craft a 50 word Boolean logic string to get you some pretty cool information. But wouldn't it just be better if you could just type in one word, click a button and yeah. something does it all for you. That is the oh, first time I've ever heard an author say, do not buy my book. Don't buy my book. I mean, you can. It's, it, just, it makes a, Hey, listen, if, if, if you need a, a book or a, a doorstop for your bathroom, it's about that thick. So it's just about perfect. It'll slip right in there. But 10 years but, ago, it was cutting edge. Yes, it was. I mean, I would say it's still, you know, I'd say 70% of the book still works. But like I said, I've, re I've really devoted um, my efforts to the online tool. Yeah. And so the, the, it's called the sales Intel engine. I'll go on and show my screen here. Now I build a, a industry specific versions. So I've got a lot of different versions for different industries. I'm just going to show you kind of the base Intel engine and what I'm talking about. It's not really a search engine per se. What it is, is it's a, the easiest way to think about it is a Google search overlay. So everything you could do, you can do in Google. I just try to make it really easy. So for example, if I go up here and I might say company or industry, so I'm going to say manufacturing in uh, Dallas. And then I can click on any one of these buttons. So if I want to see, well, find me companies that are um, relocating or moving, manufacturing companies relocating or moving to Dallas, I just click the button and it pulls up a list of those companies. So here's my sales trigger. And notice that I already automatically defaulted to past year. And so you could just easily click through any of these, you know, find me any manufacturing contracts in Dallas, find me any uh, new partners or products. And what's going on underneath here, again, you could do this on your own in Google, but what I've developed is the ability wow. to <laughs> dynamically create a search string. So that's what you'd actually have to type to get the exact result I just showed you. <laughs> so good luck with that. 
And yeah. then it, it changes, it dynamically changes based on what you type in and what button you click. One I love, by the way, that's so relevant. So we'll type in medical, medical, and I'm going to type in um, Los Angeles. Well, I'm going to type in Minneapolis because I know there's a lot of medical stuff going on in Minneapolis. Funding activity. So, I mean, you think about who do I want to sell? Wouldn't I want to sell to somebody that just got funding? So these folks just raised 7.4 million. Now, I can pretty much guarantee you that even though they raised it back in December, that the investors have not gone to that company, that company's CEO, and recently said, hey, um, you know, I know times are tough. We gave you that 7.4 million. We'd really like you to put that in an indexed mutual fund, preferably conservative bonds. I don't think that's happening. What I think <laughs> is happening, because anytime somebody's receiving funding, what is that telling us? They're coming out with new products. They're, they're, they're expanding, they're growing. It's an awesome sales trigger. And you don't think people are getting funding now? Well, you're wrong. I mean, if I go in, I'll take out, I'll just broaden it a little bit. Give me, find me medical companies that have received funding in the past week. Okay, so these are, you know, I, yes, Phil is right. For most of the 90%, maybe it's 98%. You're not going to be able to sell into anybody right now. You just got to go out, reach out, show that you care, be genuine, authentic, provide value to other people. But there are companies out there that are massively growing that need you right now. But you've got to tailor your message, real-time relevance, which actually is redundant, but, <laughs> right? but, but it's, like, it's hyper-relevance. Because if I call these folks, I'm going to read this article. I'm going to learn a little bit about them. Now, here's the really cool one. I'm going to grab this one right here. We'll see... Uh, Vita Health is the name of the company. So, well, great. Who do I reach at Vita Health? I'm going to go into People Search Biz. I'm going to type in Vita Health. And I'm backdooring into LinkedIn. So, if, as long as I have a LinkedIn profile, I can click on any one of these and it'll pull up their profile. So, if I want to find uh, Vice President of Sales, Stan, Stan Scott, here's his LinkedIn profile. I can even go figure out this person's contact information. I'm going to go down to contact info. Now, this is pretty cool. The concept here is for most companies, their email address is the same back end as their website. So, for example, if I work at Widget Corporation, website might be www.widget.com. Email address might be srichter at widget.com. So, we got to go find their website domain. Let's go see it. It's vita.com. Now, I'm going to go here and see if I can get their email naming convention. Doesn't always work, hopefully it does on this one. But we're gonna see if we can get their email naming convention. And there we go. So it looks like they use, looks like they use a, a bunch of different ones, which is unfortunate. But in general, it could be first initial, or maybe it's just last name, I don't know, I can't really tell. That's why I have these other buttons right here as well. You know, see if, see if I can find any email addresses online. And so you can scroll through and see if we can find any email addresses online. What I'm hoping to find is a, uh, is a person. And again, it doesn't totally surprise me on, on startup type companies that we're not getting a lot. Let me give you one that I know works as an example. So I'll go, I know that General Mills is genmills.com. And I can click on any one of these. Let's do um, phone numbers. And I can see that at General Mills, so again, I'm looking for an email address that in general, they use Allison Olson at generalmills.com. So let's say I wanted to go find, um, we'll do General Mills. I wanted to find someone with the word um, chief in their job title, uh, responsible for uh, marketing. Oh, goodness. Sorry about that. Keeps thinking I'm going I'm to Russian spy today. So here we go. Ivan Pollard. Ivan's email address is most likely going to be, we'll go back up here. Uh, we can verify this. Ivan.pollard at genmills.com. I can even see if that email address is online. Here we go. Ivan.pollard at genmills.com. And there's his phone number. So that's, that's kind of how you use the system. You find a, a sales trigger event 
And then you can go in and again, if I was meeting with General Mills, this is the you got the news, I'd go right up here, General Mills, what's going on in their world today. Again, maybe, maybe I'm gonna add in the word um, cyber past month. So what's General Mills doing as it relates to cyber or cybersecurity? I'm gonna add in cybersecurity because it's pulling up other things. General Mills cybersecurity in the past month. So there's going to be some things in here. These articles are related to General Mills and cybersecurity. So now I'm relevant when I pick up the phone. Again, that real time relevance. As I like to say, you know, one of the things I've always taught Shaquille is, um, oh, sorry about that. One of the things I've always taught Shaquille is, um, can you, what screen am I on now? Are you seeing me? We're seeing your Google and we're seeing you. Oh, okay, great. So I got to figure out how to stop sharing here. Oh, oh, there we go. Stop share. Okay. Okay. So one of the things I've always taught is the concept of the three by five. Never send an email, go on a Zoom call, pick up the phone without doing the three by five, spending yeah. three minutes trying to find five pieces of information or right. five minutes trying to find three pieces of information. Right. You know, first words out of your mouth need to be about the other person. Dale Carnegie said it in 1920, sweetest sound in English language, sound of someone's name. With the Intel engine, I like to say it's three by five, but spend three seconds trying to find five pieces of information or five seconds trying to find three. It's a little more than that, obviously, yeah. but that's kind of the example. You know, um, one of the things that I've thought a lot about is kind of what are the um, silver linings to the way we're working now? Obviously, mm -hmm. you know, we're all people that like to meet with our customers and prospects. We like to get out to see them. And that's challenging now, obviously. But there's also some positive sides to that. I mean, we're here. Most of our customers now we're doing video calls with, mm -hmm. which means that we're saving the time from traveling and parking and going on flights. And that means we have extra time at our desk in front of a computer that we can devote to research like what you've just shown us to be relevant when we're talking to the customer. Exactly. And we'll talk to one prospect, we can go come, come off the phone, do a bit of research, re research before we talk to the next one. And there's time to do that. And so, yep. uh, but just as we're uh, wrapping up here, I'm just gonna share my screen here. Um, because I wanted to just show a few follow-up places for information. I wanna encourage those that are on the call that are not yet part of our Third Box Thinking group to go into LinkedIn, join the Third Box Thinking group. You can search it up. Um, and uh, we're gonna be sharing all sorts of tools, techniques, ideas, uh, thoughts to become more relevant more of the time. Um, we're very uh, grateful to have the sponsorship of the Summit Group for that LinkedIn group, as well as for this webinar. Uh, you can learn more about summitvalue.com. It's basically a mission in life is to help people become more relevant. Um, and if anybody on this call or listening in is interested in having a conversation with me, uh, you can go to shaquillebarmel.ca slash consulting. Um, uh, to, to, to happy to have a free Conver uh, no commitment conversation with anybody interested in talking more about these ideas or relevance, even just share insights and go back and forth and share ideas. Happy to do that. Um, and then Sam, I've got your uh, URL there yeah. uh, for your website. If people want to learn more about you, um, I expect there's probably going to be some people interested in that tool that you showed. Cause I bet you there's a lot of people not going to want to learn how to do all that kind of uh, funky searches that mm -hmm. you showed us. Um, can I just tell people that if they send me an email or uh, a follow up, I will send a recording of this webinar to people. If they just Absolutely. follow me, I can get them in touch with you. Is that okay? Absolutely. That'd be great. Awesome. Awesome. Um, Sam, this has been fantastic. It was a great refresher for me. I really enjoyed it. There's definitely a lot more, uh, a lot more to learn, but you gave us a bit of a, a taste, which is very helpful. And, uh, and I really, really appreciate your time. Yeah, thank you. There's, there's a lot more, but hopefully those were the, so those are some of the tips again, just like as, as you just said, we have a little bit of extra time. Master, practice some of these techniques and never, ever, ever pick up the phone, send an email, jump on a Zoom call, do a LinkedIn connection without knowing something about the other person. Absolutely. Make sure that you're exceptionally relevant. When you do that, you'll massively differentiate yourself from all the competition and you'll really start to build that relationship and gain permission to ask those challenging questions that really allow us to then align them us fit proof. Absolutely.
Absolutely. So thank you. And to everybody listening in, really, really appreciate uh, the time that you've given us today. Uh, and I would love to just encourage you to stay in touch. Um, we, are, we have a YouTube channel and we're going to be starting to send out regular videos with ideas and tips from Phil and other professionals in the summit group. Uh, perhaps Sam will do us a little video. Um, and so we're going to be posting on the Third Box Thinking group how to subscribe to our channel so you can get some real-time uh, real uh, messages throughout, throughout your week. Um, wish you all the best. Take care of yourselves. Take care of your family. Find ways to stay connected. Look after yourself. Thanks very much, everybody. Thanks.